Good evening. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the one who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the great I Am and the Most High God. We call him the Lily of the Valley and the Rose of Sharon. We call him the Prince of Peace. And he's the one that we say there's no sweeter or more precious name than the name of Jesus. And he is just the same as his precious name. And I, I greet you in that wonderful name this evening, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to what we would call a bit or a prayer meeting or an hour of prayer. And this evening, we're just going to visit around one piece of the scripture that God spoke to me about. But we're going to be looking at maybe three different verses. And um, I'd ask you now, just before we begin, uh, we begin, would you please go and get your Bible? I'd like you to read it with me. I'd like you to read it with me as I read it. And I'd like you to have a look at it with me as I as I speak about what God has given me. And, and so go get your Bible um, so we can have a look at it together. But let's begin the right way. Um, I'd like to, with all my heart, to be able to see you right now at this moment. I can't see you, but I do greet you and I do love you and I do miss you. And I can't wait to see you all again when you're seated in the church. Um, but I know that we are children of God. We are all the Geus. We're in one spirit together. Um, and from my side and from Maria, we just want to say we miss everybody. We miss you all and can't wait to see you again. But let's begin the right way. Right there where you are, if you would please with me, bow your heads, close your eyes, let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you in this evening hour for your grace and your mercy and your love and your kindness. We want to thank you, Lord, that you are the one that is called faithful. You are faithful from age to age. And from generation to generation, you are faithful from everlasting to everlasting, for you do not change. And Heavenly Father, in this evening hour, we come into your presence not by works that we have done, but by the most precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blood of the Lamb of God that was slain for us, that we might be called children of God this evening. Lord, I plead your precious blood over me, spirit, soul, and body, and I plead your blood over every person that's tuning in and listening now and might listen later. Lord, open our hearts and open our minds and open our ears. Let us hear what the Spirit would speak to us this evening through your word, Lord. Lord, hide me behind the cross, guide me by thy Holy Spirit, and let your word, Lord, have the first place. Let it be led and driven by the power of the Holy Spirit tonight. Lord, we give you all the praise, the glory, the honor, and the thanksgiving, and I pray this tonight in Jesus' wonderful, holy, mighty name. We thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Uh, there's two songs that's laid upon my heart. The first one is my favorite song. So I know there's nobody singing with me. If you feel you'd like to sing with me at home, that would be fantastic. Um, I can't wait till the day that Maria can play the piano with me, and, and there'd be two of us that would be singing. She'd be playing. But with our little ones, it's just impossible at the moment. The day will come and I'm waiting for that day. But until then, just the two songs that are on my heart. Uh, my first one is one of my favorites, so you'll hear me sing it a lot. And it goes as follows. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. There is only one way to touch him you just believe when you call on his name yes touching jesus is all that matters then your life will never be the same there is only one way to touch him just believe when you call on his name yes touching jesus it's all that matters then your life can never be the same there is only one way to touch him 
Just believe when you call on his name. Amen. Touching Jesus. And it's possible if you just call upon his name. The second song came to me uh, this afternoon. And um, it's strange because a lot of times we want to control situations in our life. And with people the way we are, uh, the, the one time we're most uncomfortable is when we're not in control of what's happening. And um, the song comes to my mind because it's God that's seated on the throne in heaven. It's Him that has all power and authority and dominion. And it is He who is in control, not really us. And we can trust Him because He loves us. And the song that comes to my mind is an old Pentecostal song. And it says the following. It says, Let go and let God have His wonderful way. Let go and let God have His way. Your worries will vanish, your night turn to day. Let go and let God have His way. Let go and let God have His wonderful way. Let go and let God have His way. Your worries will vanish, your night turn to day. Let go and let God have His way. Let go and let God have His wonderful way. Let go and let God have His way. Your worries will vanish, your night turn to day. Let go and let God have His way. Let go and let God have His wonderful way. Let go and let God have His way. Your worries will vanish, your night turn to day. Let go and let God have His way. Amen. I trust that blessed you, blessed me. And if I was singing just for myself, I enjoyed it. But I'm sure you enjoyed it as well. There's a piece of the scripture that I would like to speak to us about this evening. Just before we pray, and we're going to spend a little time looking at the Word of God, a little time praying. I want to keep my eye on the time. Um, it's written in the book of Philippians. It's chapter 2 and verses 12. Philippians chapter 2. And verses 12. And um, that's why I asked you to have your Bible so you can read it with me. Philippians chapter 2 verses 12. And it starts this way. Therefore, my beloved. Now I'd like to stop there. Seems strange, but I'd like to stop there. Therefore, my beloved. That word therefore means because of. Omrida. So that means that something must have come before this. So there must be something, therefore, my beloved. So because of this, my beloved. And then he carries on. So because of, because of what? Therefore what? Because of what? So now we've got to go to a few verses before this to understand why, what, what exactly Paul is speaking to the Philippians about that he says, therefore, because of this, my beloved. So what is it that he's talking about? Let's go back to verse 5. So Philippians chapter 2 verses 5. It'll make sense in a little bit. Stay with me. So Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. This is the therefore. This is the because. So what does it say? It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Amen. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Therefore, because Jesus became flesh and humbled himself and was obedient and died on the cross, therefore, because of that, God has highly exalted him, lifted him up, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So if you look at that, that is the gospel message. God which is the Son of God, Jesus, became flesh, dwelt among men, was obedient to the Father, humbled himself, emptied himself of his glory, took up the cross, died for us, 
And because of it, God has given him, the Father has given the Son a name which is above every name, that at the name of the Lord Jesus, every knee should bow, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Now let's look at the verse I want us to look at. Therefore, because of the gospel, and because that this is what you know, and this is what you confess, and that this is what you believe. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Amen. So Paul is saying to them, therefore, my beloved. So in other words, we can say it to ourselves tonight and I can say, because of this, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, because we have confessed Jesus Christ as our Lord, because we know he died on the cross for us, because we know he has the name above all names, because we confess him to be our Lord and our master, because of this, because we have obeyed and openly said this, it says, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. So in other words, when everybody was in the church, we showed everybody on a Sunday and on a Wednesday what we believed. We showed them our faith. We showed them our way of life. We showed it openly to the congregation. We showed it on a Sunday morning. We showed it when we testified. We showed it when we were here. We showed it when we lifted our hands. We showed it when we were singing. We showed it in the presence of many. It wasn't hidden away. We openly showed that we loved and served and believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. We showed it openly. And that's what Paul is saying here. You have always obeyed. Now, not only in my presence, listen to what it says, but now, much more in my absence. Now Paul is saying to them, you've done it when I was there. Now, much more in my absence. We've done it where people could see it. We stood and we testified of the goodness of God. But God spoke to me in the scripture and said, now Joshua, much more in the absence of the congregation. Now much more in my absence. Now not, not where everybody can see you, but now where it's done in secret. What matters most? What I say to people in public or how I think and how my heart is in private? Which one's more important? How I look to others when they are watching or how I am with God when nobody else is around? What's more important? How I pretend to be or how I am when I am with myself. To God it's much more important. Much more in the absence of the witness of others. I must live for God. Because he in his word says go into your room and close the door. And pray in secret where God sees in secret. The Afrikaans say it mooi. Die Heere is die kenner van die hart en die toetse van die nere. I, God is the one that knows the heart and tests, tests the resolve of people. I can say one thing, but God knows what my heart is like. You know, we have said, Lord, we worship you, we praise you, we glorify you. We've said it in the open. Don't even believe for a minute that you will not be tested in the secret place about the words that you spoke in public. What I've told people in public God's more important. Am I living that life? It's more important to God and God's more interested in, am I living that life when nobody else is around? But God sees and God knows. And God spoke to me about this. You know, it seems strange, but, but not now in front of everybody, but much more in the absence of the meetings. The Bible says something. Work out your own. Paul says this. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling that's interesting to me because although we might run as a team we we run as a team as the body of christ 
because the finger doesn't work independently of the hand and the eye can't say I don't need the foot, we need each other, we're part of one body and we're a team. But even if people run a race as a team, each individual member in that team must run their own race. If you think of a relay race, they pass the baton from one to the next, from one to the next. But if one of them don't do what they're supposed to be doing, the baton doesn't get passed and the race doesn't get won because somebody along the line wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing. So I want to bring it back to this. We are part of a team and Pastor Dani is going to support you and I am going to support you and feel free to phone me if you need prayer, if you need to talk, phone me. I will answer my phone. If I don't answer, I will phone you back. I will speak to you. But I want to bring it back to this is that when the church is closed and when I'm in my binnacle, I must run the race, not in front of everybody, but now, much more, in the absence of eyes watching me, I must work out my own salvation. Ek het a strijd wat ek moet strijd. I have a fight that I've got to fight. I have a race that I must run. And I myself must finish the race. The Christian life is not only about starting the race, the Christian life is about finishing the race. And when you start the race, and a lot of times when you have a lot of people watching you, like at the beginning of a long race, there's a lot of people spectating. But just when you get down the road and things start to get difficult, what happens? There's no spectators anymore. Then it's you in the road. But I thank God that He never leaves us. Because it's not just me in the road. I have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I have the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of me. I have God that is, that is telling me, forward, Joshua. You can do this forward, but I must work out my salvation with fear and trembling, with fear and beer. But why? Why fear and trembling? Because the scripture goes further and it says, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit in me that says, Is it not tight that you weer the Bible gaan oopmaak? It's the Holy Spirit in me that says, when last have you read your Bible? It's the Holy Spirit in me that says, you're not praying like you used to pray. That's why I must work out my salvation. I must pray when there's nobody encouraging me to pray. I must read my Bible when there's nobody encouraging me. When there's no eyes watching me, am I doing it? Am I not doing it? I must do it because the Holy Spirit is inside of me. And the Holy Spirit is leading me closer and closer to Christ. The Holy Spirit is saying just one more step in the race. Just one more step in the race. Just, so I must work out my salvation with fear and with trembling. Why? Not now in front of everybody's eyes. Not now while they can see, Ooh, hey, is in gebit, of hey, is nie in gebit nie. Not now while people can look at you and say, Ooh, hey, dra, salvin, of hey, did. It's not about that. Much more now, in the absence of all witnesses, much more when nobody's watching, much more when God is watching, when nobody else, much more now, while the doors are closed, much more now must I serve God. Much more now must I, ek moet die vier binnen my queer. I must stir alive the flames. Paul says to Timothy, Anatsu Pereo, stir up the gift of God that is within you. And now I must serve God when nobody else is watching and nobody else is there to encourage me. And I want to ask you, how do you do that? How do I do that? There's something I was thinking about. And I'd like to ask you, how many of you have set your watch or set your alarm or set your cell phones alarm to a certain time of day or a certain time of night? And you set that alarm because at that time you said, now I'm going to separate myself and I'm going to pray or that time at night I'm going to wake up and I'm going to pray or that alarm is to remind me that I now need to read my Bible. I'd like to ask you how many of you have done it. But now I'd like to ask you another thing. How many of you have ignored that alarm? How many of you have allowed that alarm to pass by and not done what you said you were going to do by setting the alarm? How many of you have pressed snooze and kept sleeping? And I'd like to be the first to answer and say, me, I've done it many times. And I'd like to say, I set my mind to do it, but I never set my heart to do it. And what's important for us, if we are going to now, now much more in the absence of witnesses serve God, we can't do it 
out of a verstand. You can't in your mind say, Woo, what he's preaching sounds nice. I'm going to do it. You can't do it from your mind. Because there's many people who have come into the church and said, with their mind, I accept Jesus. With their mind, I understand the gospel. With their mind, I'd like to experience that. But with their heart, they never set their heart upon the Lamb of God. They never set their heart upon the crucified one. They never set their heart upon the fact that he said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And if he will not do that, he's not worthy of me. They set their mind, but they never set their heart. And if you and I are going to do this much more now in the absence of witnesses where we can look like we have where we can look like we can, we, we can look like something special, now much more in the absence of all of that, if you and I are going to serve God, if we're going to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, what we must set is our heart. Lord, I have set my heart. I set my heart. Not my, I set my heart, Lord, that I will read your word. I set my heart that I will seek your face. I set my heart that I will strive after a deeper relationship with you because I am tired of shallow waters. I'm tired of sitting on a rocking chair one day forward, one day backwards. Now, in the absence of everybody watching me, Lord, I set my heart. I set my heart to serve you. I set my heart, Lord, to read your word. I set my heart to fast. I set my heart to pray. I set my heart for these things because like the deer pants for the streams of water, so my heart thirsts after you. And your Holy Spirit wills me to go. And I don't want to grieve God. That's why I work out my salvation with fear and trembling, lest I grieve the Holy Spirit by not following his leading. The book of Job says something beautiful. It's Job chapter 11 verse 13. It says, if you would set your heart and stretch out your hands towards him, that's God. If iniquity and sin was in your hand and you put it away from yourself, if you would let not let wickedness come into your house, then surely you would be able to lift up your face without spot. You could be steadfast, trusting and not fear, not fear in this time. Not fear because you would forget your misery and remember it as waters that have passed away. Your life would be brighter than the noonday. And though you were once in darkness, you would now be like the morning. And how does that promise start? If you would, if you would set your heart. The last one I'd like to read, Jeremiah 29 verses 13, one of my favorite scriptures. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek for me with all your heart. If you would set your heart. I've set my alarm lots of times and slept past it. But the minute I set my heart, it made all things different. And, and I want to set my heart. That Lord, much more now. Much more now. In the absence of any witness. In the absence of, of what people might think of. In the absence of all these, these visual things. Lord, in the absence of, of all spectators. In the absence of everything lord of those that can approve of me and those that can in the absence lord now much more i want to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling because it's the holy spirit in me who wills and does for his good pleasure he's drawing me to him and i don't want to miss the season again i don't want to miss the season we know we had a season previously where we were locked in and we could seek god how many of us let that season pass by i don't want to let another season pass by Lord, I set my heart to much more now in the absence. Now, as I've always obeyed in the church and in front of everybody, now much more, much more in the absence of witnesses. Let's seek God. Let's seek Him because He's calling to His children. God's church, God is preparing something in His people and in His church. We feel like we've been pushed down, but it's, it's the likeness that we've, We've attached to our religious ways. It's the lightness that we've said. Ah, it's the lightness that we've, we've said things like blessed and highly favored. I'm not interested in blessed and highly favored. I want to know the sea walker, the blind man healer. I want to walk hand in hand with the man from Galilee. I want to walk with Jesus. I don't want to claim blessed and highly. God has pushed us into a place where, where a relationship with God is what matters now. Much more in the absence of the big church show but now in the private place where those who know him will stand but those who will realize it's just been a game will realize that they don't have anything to stand on but we much more in his absence we set our hearts amen i'd like to pray just as we close i'd like to mention a few names and i'd like you to
to pray for them. I'm going to close with a closing prayer, but I'd ask you as I close, you, you know, if we were here, we'd say, on set, nog steeds so half a year. we've still got half an hour to pray. So I'd like you to do that. When I'm finished now, don't go and do other things. Sit with your family, take hands if you want to, um, sit around wherever you're sitting now, and for the next half an hour, pray. Pray for the people I mentioned, but pray as the Holy Spirit leads you. And if you want to confess tonight, confess, Lord, easy to confess with other people, easy in the witness, but not so easy when I'm alone. And Lord, tonight I set my heart, not my mind, not the clunk, more. no, no, not it sounds nice, but Lord, I set my heart, here's my heart, Lord. You sit upon the throne of it, and I set my heart towards you. Take my all, you are the potter, I am the clay. I surrender all to thee, my Lord, to thee. Let's, I want to pray for, well, I want to mention Tani Shomain. Tani Annika is not doing well. I want to mention Tani Antoinette, uh, with the operatie gehad het, an operation that's not doing well. Tani Marty Trotsky, Tani Magda, I want to think about young brother Ruben, uh, Tani Sari, sa dochter, um, sister Clara, she is doing better, but we ask for volkome geneesing. I think about Tani Nelly, uh, Tani Joey, I think about Oom Harry, I think about Tani Ray, and then also Tani Elsie. Let's pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we want to thank you for this word, and we thank you that Jesus is our example. He humbled himself to become flesh. He humbled himself to death. He humbled himself to the death on the cross. And Lord, if we don't follow the example of Jesus, we'll never get to where we're supposed to get to. And Lord, we humble ourselves before you tonight. And Lord, we ask, as we have been obedient, obedient Lord, the witnesses of many, allow us, Lord God, to now much more, in the absence of this, that, Lord, we can press into your presence. Help us where we've failed. Help us where we've been distracted with other things. Help us, Lord, where we've, where we've thought, okay, well, now we can sit back because there's no church. So, uh, you know, Lord, we don't want to relax because your Bible and your word warns us, woe unto them that are at ease in Zion. Now is the time not to relax, but now is the time to set our hearts upon you. Lord, I confess Busy with other things, but now, Lord, I ask by your Holy Spirit and by your grace, help us and me to set our hearts upon you, Lord, so that we can now much more, much more, Lord, much more we can work out our salvation in fear and trembling. Because I must run this race for myself. Nobody can finish it for me. And Lord Jesus, though I've got people cheering me on, although I'm going through the valley and up the hill and there's nobody that's cheering me on. Lord, I must work out my salvation with fear and trembling because your Holy Spirit is in me and you've said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, through the valley, over on the top of the mountain and over the other side, you will never leave us. And we must just keep our hearts and eyes upon you. Lord, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Help us to look to you, Lord, and help us to keep our hearts. Lord, set our hearts that we can seek you in this time. And we thank you for it, Lord. And we ask you to help us to do this in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask for those that I've prayed for now, Lord. I lift them up to you. Some in hospital, some sick, not feeling well, not doing well. I ask you to lay your nail-scarred hand upon them. Let your soothing balm of Gilead come upon them. You are the one that heals yesterday, today, and forever, for you have not changed. I ask you to walk into those rooms, lay your hand upon them. I ask you to heal them by your power, that they might testify God healed me. No man touched me. And we thank you for it, Lord Jesus. I pray for the gemeente. Every person who's listened and every person who's not, lift us up, draw us to thyself, that we might come out of this time on fire for you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Good night for you.